anyone who's been to a Cass Road Show, this set should look pretty familiar. We've been using it for over two years to demonstrate production techniques for cutting trim. And that's what I want to repeat in this short little video. I want to demonstrate the two fundamental techniques that we teach during the presentation so that the guys who were in the back row and might not have gotten it have a chance to see it up close. This is a classical window or door head. It's not a pediment. A pediment has to have rise and run. It has to look like a little gable end in the middle. This isn't. This is flat. So it's a classical entablature. And that's what you usually see on a lot of Victorian homes. You even see them in arts and crafts homes around the turn of the century. That's the turn of the 20th century. So what we're going to do is gonna, we're going to replicate that style. We're going to use a little pendant right here, a little pointed pendant. And by incorporating a pointed pendant, we're kind of including some of the Gothic ornamentation you see in the craftsman style and in the Italian period that preceded it during the late 1800s. And this is crown molding. It's solid in the back, which I'll show you in a second. But notice how it touches the wall at this outside corner, at this inside corner, at this inside corner, and across the face of this pendant. It's always touching the wall. And that's what you measure, the wall. You don't measure the ceiling. You don't measure up here. So when you put your measurements on this material, your measurements are always made at the bottom of the molding. Notice on this outside corner how the short point of the miter is at the back of the molding against the wall. Any time you cut molding around an outside corner, you're always measuring to and you're cutting to the short point of the miter. The long point is out here, and it's actually way out here. But the long point on this little fillet is way out here. It's the short point that's at the back of the molding. And look at this inside corner. The long point of the miter is at the back of the molding for an inside corner. It's against the wall. So you always measure to and you cut to the long point on an inside corner. And here's another short point for an outside corner. There's another outside corner that's going around this pendant right here. And that's cut and measured to the short point of the miter. So that's the first thing we want to pay attention to. The next thing we want to look at is a cut list. Let's pull this off of here so we can make one. The first piece that we got to cut, it goes right on the end of this freeze board and it only measures three quarters of an inch, right? I mean, this freeze board is a piece of one by, so it's three quarters of an inch thick from a butt cut against the wall to a short point on an outside corner on this corner of the freeze. And then, we're going to put this pendant on there. When we put the pendant on, we're going to have a three-quarter inch piece on this edge, and a three-quarter inch piece on this edge, and a three-and-a-half inch piece across the face of the pendant, because this is cut from a piece of one by four. So really, we almost don't even need a cut list. The only piece that's kind of special is this first one that turns the corner and comes up to the pendant. And if we're smart, we'll make that piece three quarters of an inch too. That way we don't need a cut list for anything. We can just go right to our saw and start cutting. But before we can go to that miter saw, yeah. we got one more thing we got to look at. Because I want to be sure we get started off on the right foot. If we get started on the right foot, we won't make any mistakes. So let's look at this piece of crown. Yeah, look at this really close. That is a piece of crown. It's solid in the back. It hasn't been cut off in the back, but it's still a piece of crown. And it runs right along the top of this head, just like crown molding runs along the top of a wall. The measurements will be made at the bottom of the molding. And the first piece we're gonna cut has a butt cut on the left hand end it butts up against the wall on the left hand end. And that is all I need to know to get started at my miter saw. Here's that crown molding again. I've still got my hand on the left hand end too. That's because that's the first end I'm going to cut. I'm going to take this material and I'm going to turn it upside down at my saw 
so that while I'm cutting it, I can cut right to the measurement marks. That's one of the primary reasons you always turn crown upside down at your saw. So you can see the measurement marks. I mean, you also have to turn it upside down because it's not solid like this crown. It's cut out in the back. And when you put it against the fence, it'll just rock if you don't put it in upside down and nest it against the fence and the base of the saw. But I turn solid crown upside down too, just so I can see those measurement marks. And now, this isn't the right end, so this is the left-hand end. And I'm going to turn it upside down and put it back in my saw. And I'll cut this end first. So the first thing we're going to do is clean up that butt cut. Now the first piece measures 3 quarters of an inch from that butt cut to the outside corner. That's a short point. So we'll put a mark right there on the outside corner. Then we'll bring this piece over and drop the laser right on that short point. That's our first piece. We'll put that right there. Our second piece has to mate up with that miter. So I have to swing the saw back in the opposite direction to cut the mating miter. Now, I've got the mating miter for the first outside corner, right there. So the next piece has an outside corner at the face of the freeze and an inside corner where it comes up against the pendant. I don't have to swing the saw for that one. I just have to drop that laser right on that long point measurement. And that piece fits perfectly right there. And now, I gotta cut the mating miter to that piece. So all I have to do is swing the saw in the opposite direction. And that is the mating miter. Now the next piece is 3 quarters of an inch long too. And I mark it right here. And that is to the short point at the face of the pendant. So I'm cutting to the short point at the back of the molding so I don't have to swing the saw. And here is that little piece. So the next piece has to mate up with this miter, which is an outside corner going across the face of the pendant. To cut that, all I have to do is swing the saw in the opposite direction. And I've got the mating miter that runs around the face of the pendant. Now the next piece, I'm lining up the short point with the outside of my fence. The next piece measures three and a half inches because that's what runs around the face of the pendant and this miter here has to be the short point. This has to be the short point of the miter at the back of the molding. So I'm going to swing my saw in the opposite direction, dropping the laser right on the short point. Now that piece fits just like so. And all I need to do is cut the mating miter for this side, which means I have to swing my saw in the opposite direction and cut that mic. And here is that piece. Now this piece is only three quarters of an inch long, so I can hold it at my fence too, flush up the short point, make a mark at the long point, and I'm ready to cut that one. And once again, I'll just drop the laser on the long point for that inside corner. And that is the last piece we needed to get around that pendant. Now, some of you are thinking, well, I don't have twin lasers on my saw. How do you cut like that if you don't have lasers? Well, let me show you the way I used to have to cut before I got a Festool Capex. Okay, here's the first piece. 
It has a butt cut on the left side and it's cut to a short point for an outside corner. Notice that my left hand is right up against the fence on my saw. I always do this whether I'm using a capex or whether I'm using a saw without lasers. This is the only way to really get critical precision when you're making cuts on a miter saw. With your hand frozen against the fence, your thumb can wrap around the material and you can use your thumb as a microfine adjustment tool and just move that material back and forth a 64th of an inch at a time if you need to. So the technique here is to make a cut wide of the mark. And then slowly creep that measurement mark right up to the blade where it's cutting that kerf. And you can do that with your thumb. Watch. A little more. A little more. Right on. Perfectly precise cut. And that is for an outside corner. Now we have to make the mini miter. So I swing the saw in the opposite direction. And there is our mating miter, right there. The next piece, though, has to be cut with an inside corner on this end. And it's 3 quarters of an inch long. Let's see how we measure that. We take the short point from the outside corner and we flush it up with the edge of the fence. And then we make our measurement mark right there at three quarters. And now I can take my saw and use the same creeping method. First I'll cut wide of the measurement mark. And then I'll use my thumb to creep that measurement mark right to the blade. So that time, I made a whole bunch of extra cuts. You know, I exaggerated how many times you kind of creep that material up to get it right on the pencil mark. But that's the technique you use if you don't have a laser. And sometimes, you know, even with the lasers, I use that creeping technique just to really dial in the cut precisely. Let's put these pieces together now. I keep them kind of organized exactly where they go. Because if you get them mixed up, it probably takes longer to figure out which piece goes where than it does to cut them. So you may as well just cut them over again. Just throw these away and cut them all over again. But I'm going to keep them all straightened out here. And I'm going to glue these together very quickly with 2P10 glue. 2P10 is great stuff. They call it 2P10 because it's a two-part 10-second glue. I'm just going to put the glue on those two sides of those miters and both sides of this miter. And then I'm going to spray these other pieces. Notice how I'm keeping them organized. I'm keeping them exactly in the position they go in. I'm going to spray these pieces with their activator. And I'm moving them away. I'm moving them away so I don't get any spray onto the fresh glue. Then I'll take these pieces and I'll put them long point together, hold my finger on it, and hinge it closed. Because you don't sometimes get a lot of wiggle room with this stuff. They call it 2P10 because it's a two-part 10-second glue. And let me tell you, when it's brand new, it's more like 2P0. As soon as you touch it, as soon as you touch that fresh activator to the glue, it dries instantly. And the other thing you should know is sometimes you get squeeze out from these joints. And when you do, if your fingers are touching the overspray, you know, the overspray from the activator, you can get stuck to this stuff really quick. So move your fingers around a lot because it works. There, there, I had to break that loose. Here's the finished piece. And it goes around the pendant just like this. We turn it right side up. And it fits right around the pennant. And notice, I allowed a little bit of wiggle room right here, just a little bit, about a sixteenth of an inch. That way, if the pendant swells up a little bit, it won't break the miters open on the bottom of that crown molding. And then take the molding 
and put it up against the freeze until it comes up tight against the freeze on this side. And then tack the pendant and tack the molding. So that's about it. The next thing to do is exactly the same thing you've done on this side over on this side. But I'd still move from my left to my right. And after I finished this side, I'd cut this last piece, the long one that goes on in between the two. And cut that maybe two or three times until it fits just right and tight. Now there's two techniques that you want to remember from this presentation. The first one is, remember, if you notice while I was cutting at my saw, I always move my material from my left side to my right side. I'm always feeding material into the saw from the left side of the saw. That means on crown molding, I'm always cutting the left hand end first. And on baseboard, I'm always cutting the right hand end first. But if you don't move the material from one direction, you miss the magic of mating miters. That makes it so much easier to cut moldings, especially running moldings where sometimes you get confused about which way to swing the saw. You'll never get confused about which way to swing the saw, especially if you also remember that short point, long point technique. And if you forget that, here's a little memory thing you can kind of use to help spark the idea in your head again. When you go to Las Vegas, you always go in long and you come out short. For inside corners, you always measure and cut to the long point. And for outside corners, you always measure and cut to the short point.